I'm not sure if everyone caught what I said before. Um, I'm going to make a problem statement first so that folks in here can decide whether they're interested in staying for this topic because we recognize that uh, it probably might not be interesting for everybody. Uh, and so I won't mind if five minutes in some of you decide you need to go somewhere else. Um, the issue is that for um, network file systems and for network storage in general, um, uh, clients need to have a globally unique identifier. It needs to be durable across reboots. Um, it turns out this is a problem not only for NFS v4, it's also uh, an issue for uh, NVMe. Uh, the initiator, I guess, needs to have a global identifier that uh, targets can recognize. Um, so all well and good, you know, you can use something like the machine ID if you're talking about a, a physical host. Um, but then uh, when virtualization enters the picture, things get a little foggier. Um, the problem being that when you decide you want to create a container, um, where do you put the identifier? Who generates the identifier when you create a container? When it reboots, where does it go and look for it? So that it makes sure it has the same identifier that it had during its last boot instance. Um, if you've got a VM guest, uh, that you've cloned from a master, a golden master, uh, who's responsible for making sure that that identifier is changed when you uh, clone a guest. Um, so Hannes actually has a solution that he uh, has put together for NVMe. Uh, we're still looking for one for NFS and we're just sort of uh, looking for uh, uh, ideas and thoughts from other folks. Um, we certainly do want to reach out to um, the container community to understand if there are other uh, similar use cases uh, and how they might have solved the problem. Hannes, go ahead. So, yeah. Um, we have, the, we from the NVMe side, have the big advantage that we have a fixed place where the identification is stored. So meaning once generated, it's stored there. That's basically a file in a defined location. And that is the identifier which is being used going forward. So for us, it's just a matter what should be in there and who should be modifying it under which circumstances. But once it's there, it's pretty obvious, yeah, that's the one which, we be, which the whole system will be using. So for us, we are, well, slightly off the hook there because we have a fixed location where we know that's the one we need to use. Um, for NFS, as I understand correctly, this is slightly different as we don't have a location, we don't even have a file, anything. Yeah, how do, we, how do we pick the location is basically Sorry? the How do we pick the location? Yeah. No, not how do we pick, how do we pick the location? Um, where do you store it? Because it might well be that the data there is randomly generated or whatever. It's not up for, up for you to decide. It might be literally anything. So um, say for containers, it actually would make sense to just have a random identifier, a random identifier, which will be deleted if the container is removed and can never ev ever be um, regenerated. That, that's the idea, yeah. So that's the idea. But if you do that, then it needs to be, well, stored somewhere in the container, which means it needs to have a location where you can store it in that container, which also means that you have to modify your tools to look for that location where to find it. Wait, when you say location, uh, does this include the machine? It's, is the location including the machine it's on, or are you starting from the machine? Mm, so it's like just you have to include the server out, name or IP it, address. It turns out using a hardware-specific thing is a good method for seeding the data, for getting the initial data, but it's not really that good for using it. So actually, so. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is you actually would need to have a location where you can store the data, which is different from the location where you got the data from. Yeah, uh, because are using that location de within a machine or location uh, across a whole load of machines on the network? Well, and that de depends on your definition what a machine is. It's uh, basically the problem we have on iSCSI, or even on iSCSI or NVMe, or basically on any of these things. There is an identifier for uh, the host. What exactly is the host here in the context that you might have several interfaces, that you might have several whatever. Mm -hmm. So 
a machine might have different interface or different connections. Or you may have several machines sharing an address. And so, or several machines sharing an address. So what exactly is a machine and what is the context? Should I have, should I give each interface its same ID, thereby pretending that each interface is actually a machine to something, or should I just combine them, have a shared one, and if I share it, share it across which? So, um, but this is a different uh, discu discussion to be had. So um, the problem here is that at first, N um, NFS doesn't have a fixed location where it could store the identifier. So meaning you can't use def random to generate the identifier and then tell NFS to use it. Well, you can't because there's nothing where NFS There's no way to publish it. it. Sorry? There's no way to publish it. Exactly. So, and that is one of the issues with uh, it may be you need to take a leaf out of AFS's book and have yeah, well a the thing. The pro no, th and the problem for NFS here is mm -hmm. that, well, it's, you know, catch-22. So, yes, you might need to store it somewhere, but uh, that somewhere will be a file system. NFS does exactly what? Well, providing a file system. Well, well yeah, a a AFS has a volume location server, and you ask the volume location, Here's a handle tell yeah, me which server Yeah, but this just delays the, uh, delays the problem. Tell me who am I. Yeah, tell me who am I based on which credentials. So you're just referring back to someone needs to generate the credentials such that you can get the correct ID. So again, back yeah. to square one, we need to create credentials. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can even put a finer point on this uh, in the NFS case, which is one can imagine uh, NFS server, which is implemented using a virtual machine uh, that mounts a uh, Google persistent disk or Amazon Elastic black, uh, block store, and at some point, due to maintenance, we need to kill the VM. We start a new VM, but it's going to mount the pre-existing uh, virtual block device, and it's going to serve the same NFS uh, contents, and logically it's in fact the same NFS server. I mean, you could even have the problem where you have a physical, you know, bare metal NFS server and you replace the motherboard because the motherboard died, but the hard drives are staying the same, and technically that's the same server even though the CPU yeah. serial number has changed, right? right? And so it's very, very fact dependent when it's the same server and when it isn't. Yeah. And it's, well, for the server side, it's easier because the server side has storage. It has persistent storage. Clients don't necessarily have persistent storage. Yeah, so, so you can the put server it in an Etsy file on the NFS server. Exactly. The, the, yeah. the, the NFS server has a file system that is guaranteed not to go away. The clients don't have that. So some solutions we've thought of, uh, we can specify a module parameter with a UU ID on it. Um, that's how we do it today. Um, we could put that on a kernel command line, for example, if we're doing a, a, a pixie boot of the client. Um, we could put it in a, a, an Etsy file, or we could take a, a hash of the machine ID. Uh, we would take a hash of that because we're not supposed to put the machine ID in the clear on the network. Um, but then, you know, that's, that's great for the physical host. What do we do about cr when we create a container with an NFS client instance in it. It's got a different IP address, it's a different, basically it's a different individual. So how, how do we specify the, the client identifier for that? Where do we put it? Just so I understand the problem, you have both server-side and client-side identifiers. Server-side is pretty much solved because you have stable storage, so it's just the client-side you're worried about. But why does it matter for a container which is an ephemeral entity if you just randomly choose a UUID each time you bring the container up? It's got to be the same one that the container reboots. Well, what do you mean when the container reboots? You're positing an ephemeral container. When it reboots, it's a different instance. A lot of, well, so Docker containers deliberately have this property. If you have a different type of container, the ones that are truly sort of live from generation to generation often have persistent storage underneath them, so you could store the identifier there. I mean, ultimately, it's the, the container manager who should have that information, right? And the container manager should 
uh, provide this to the actual process running in the container, and that just seems like something that needs to be standardized. Right, that's our feeling as well, and I think what we've done so far is to write um, some massaged documentation that explains the problem, um, and I've got a patch pending for the NFS client to put that under the documentation uh, directory that it, so that uh, the people who write the uh, orchestration software can read that and go, okay, I've got to find a, a, a place in the file system to put that, and these are the characteristics it has to have. This is also what, what I would suggest to indeed separate out the um, ID being used from the tools for generating, generating the ideas in the f and IDs in the first place. So, i.e., just have a defined location in the file system where the ID is stored. And then modify your tool to look for this ID and use it if present. Yeah. We so, and because then you got whatever you, it's up to the admin to decide do I want to change the client ID or not? And then he can or cannot or whatever. And you can just pick whatever is there. You don't have to worry from the NFS side, from the NFS tool side, which information to use, what to do, blah, blah. You just delegate it to the previous step and the admin step of actually provide you with the, with, with the number in there. Where in the file system do you put the ID? Does NVMe if you, put if it? You Etsy somewhere. Etsy somewhere where? Yeah. It's, it's up to you. It's, uh, you get to define so you don't have a, you don't have a standard file where you put it well w we do have a standard file but that's an N NVMe file because we said it will be that will be the standard location where it will be found because we defined it that way okay and, and when so you create a container uh, what happens so and that then again the good thing is that it's pretty clear that is the location where the identification is stored so so whatever if I can you do whether you call it from within the container, from within the VM, wait, wait, blah, wait. blah. What properties do you want of this identifier? So supposing my container is going to be elastically scaled across a data center, so I've got multiple copies of it. Do each have the same ID, or do you want each to have different IDs? If and that really depends. That's an administrative well, choice. That's what I want. Well, I'm asking you, what are the properties of this identifier? Because they the answer we give you depends on what properties you I think they you need want. to be distinct for each, mm -hmm. for exactly. each uh, yeah. running container. So essentially, it, it will be a Yuya ID, where the first U is somewhat debatable. So it doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be unique, but it can be made unique. So if I've elastically scaled up the container and then I scale it back again, w w you're happy with me destroying, you know, let, let's say I scale it up by 10 times. I destroy nine of these identifiers, and then I scale it up by 10 times again and want it to come back, or I'm okay to create new ones. When I scale it 100 times and I, you know, 90 new ones, what, what properties? depends on your, uh, what you said, what you want to achieve. Whether you really want to have each container connect to the very same storage, or whether you want to have each container have a different storage. When well, this is an administrative this is elastic choice. Scaling. So, so let me assume, let me try to answer. connecting to the same storage, because it, uh, it has to be a projection, or it, all it's really doing, let's say it's elastically scaling for compute. So it's connecting to the same storage and it's just doing a com computation that it suddenly has to blow up, and it's serving different clients off the back end that you don't need to know about. So let me, let me try to address the question of do we want to preserve these across instances of containers? I think not. Uh, the, the ID, uh, the uni uniquifier is used uh, for the purpose of um, recovering lock and open state. So if the container is destroyed, it necessarily has no more open or locked files. So the, the uniquifier can go away or be recycled if you want. So in the elastic scaling use case, uh, because I'm killing the container to, to scale it down, I can get rid of the identifier. Yes. And because it only is tied to locking state that I should have destroyed, I'm free to create a different UUID each time. Yes. Okay. Well, then it sounds like it's random. So just to be clear about the RFC, on the wire, is this the client ID? It's the client owner on the wire. Yeah. So there's, there's a, it got confusing a little bit to look at the NFS 4.1 RFC. There's a client ID and a client owner, right? Yes. And um, so you're talking about for recovery of locks and recovery of open state, specifying a consistent client ID or client owner when you recover stuff, when you have a container that's moved in flight, sort of. It's, it's obviously it's the, more the container shut down, there'd be no need for this, right? No, it's not a container shut down, it's a container restart. So. What do I need to do to get a safe restart, to achieve a safe, uh, a, a safe restart of a container? 
So it was suspended with files open and locked. Yes. And then when you restart it, you have to make sure after it's suspended, and we have a similar issue with SMD, right? We have persistent state, um, yep. and we submit that it's resilient and durable state as well. But but these are important, right? That, that uh, you have to specify. Um, but so you have this two fields, right? Client ID and client owner. And what kind of puzzles me about this is that wouldn't this just be Etsy NFS and you stick whatever that number is in Etsy NFS and you're done? I mean, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we would like it to be that simple. We're not sure that the containers can do that. So, I mean, I think. Well, why not? Containers provide a uh, provide file system. Well, a container may provide a file system. It doesn't necessarily. If you elastically scale the container, it will have the same file in Etsy, whatever. Yeah, it, right, exactly. So, but if you want to have that level, if you want to have that level of guarantees, you have to provide file systems. You just stick here. That's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the obvious answer here is if that magic Etsy whatever file doesn't exist, it becomes a random client identifier, and the presumption is, you know, you don't care about that client if it gets destroyed and recreated because there's not going to be any locking state to be preserved. If you do care about locking state being preserved across a container uh, reboot, then you need to establish an Etsy whatever, and maybe that's yep. as simple as it needs to be, at least mm -hmm. for the NFS case. Yep. <laughs> so the problem that we're in with the... Uh, Linux NFS client at the moment is that when we talk about containers, we're really talking about network namespaces. So when a process is put into a new network namespace, it needs to have a different identifier than the host. No, it doesn't need to have. It doesn't For us it necessarily There are cases where it should have, but there are other cases where it not need to have one. Well, wait a minute. So, so network namespace is usually a pod-based thing, not a container thing. So if I have two containers in the same pod sharing the same network namespace, you want them, they always have to have the same identifier. For the Linux NFS client, we'll treat the server the same in the page cache and the state is all shared if they're in the same network namespace. Oh, okay, this is, this is the client identifier. Yes. I actually would get away from the notion of a network namespace because you might have several NFS connections. Each will uh, are question whether they should have the same client identifier. They might have different. If ones. if the namespace has a, its own unique IP address, then it needs to have its own client identifier. Mm, okay. So I that's as far as I know. We're kind of like going back and forth a lot on this, and like in cases where like well, the container doesn't have to have this, container doesn't have to have that. Uh, working for a company that does exclusive containers, we configure a lot of that stuff. And a lot of that stuff is not brought in from the file system, it's brought in from some service managing thing. And so, yes, okay, putting in Etsy NFS or whatever doesn't work for the case where you just fire up a bunch of network namespace things. But if that's what you're doing, you then, you just need to provide it a way to provide its own container ID through right. some interface, right? So like, Okay, and if like, I, s I guess what you're saying is like you want NFS to be able to like read this information, but if you, it sounds to me like you need to just provide a generic interface to say this is my client ID, and then we just let user space figure it out, right? Or am I misunderstanding the? Uh, yeah, I think as far as I understood, I, I think you're saying the same thing, right? I mean, uh, th this is not a, this is a user space provided yeah. Identifier and the user but user space provided concept, right? You didn't want to do this in in the kernel. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to implement policy in the kernel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So like. I, I so, the question I have for for you as someone who who uh, deploys thousands and thousands of uh, containers this way, is it enough for us to pro provide you with a documentation to do it and implement it yourself, or yeah. would you like tools? Documentation. All right. If you, if you just tell us what we need to do to do the thing, we'll do the thing. Okay. Yeah, the, the squidgy part about that for me is, you know, it's a file system. We need to be out of the box, out of the shrink wrap. We need to behave reliably, and we don't currently because you need to, to do the special setup. I, like, I would argue that containers are specialized enough that you just okay. give us 
like I think that like clearly I don't run Docker or any of that other stuff, but you know those people can also do the same thing, right? If they have the documentation, they can go and do the thing for themselves. Uh, and Facebook. They, but they have to know. They have to read that documentation. Right. They As have, they have to know. You have the fallback. I mean, fallback is a random identifier you create when the container is created. If the container's orchestration system doesn't give it the ID, it's not as expected to persist across crashes and reboots. Therefore, it can have a, a randomly generated ID each time. If the orchestration system wants it to be persistent, it will provide the ID. That seems to be good enough. Yeah, I, I think yeah we don't have the, the random uh, default behavior at this point. Yeah, but the point is, if, if, the, if you don't get anything passed in, you'll know that. You just generate one randomly. Uh, and today it uses the same identifier as the host, as the as as the init namespace. I think that that's probably wrong. Yeah, yeah that sounds wrong. bad. It's also hard to just start creating random identifiers because we can break existing setups. But the expectation is, if the existing setup knows what it's doing, it'll pass the ID in, so it will sort it all out for you. This is only the fallback case where you didn't get an ID passed in, and you know you didn't get an ID passed in, what do you do? Generate it randomly. I, I think the problem we're running into here is the mere ID concept of a container is a user space thing, yeah. right? Which means the container orchestration system needs to do this default thing. Right, we, we don't want to yeah, we randomly that. create that yeah. when you create a container, you know, a, a CG, right? Because the CG is the low level thing that the kernel knows about, but ultimately this all has to be in the container orchestration system because containers are a user space concept. If, if you have clear expectations about what you, uh, but how you think NFS should behave, then document it because that's the way how standards are made for containers. Like, it's, it's, it's the sad truth, I guess. Yeah, as I said, we, ha we have some, I have a patch pending that adds that documentation. It might not be complete uh, or utterly uh, clear right now, but, you know, we've got, of course, time to, to fix it. But that documentation is in the pipeline, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I can only, again, I can only speak for my guys, but, like, my guys pay attention to what the kernel community does with containers and they take full advantage anytime anybody does anything. So like it's it'll be consumed inside of meta pretty quickly if you just tell us what to do, right? Okay. Um maybe I could CC you the patch I have and you can say thumbs up, this looks good. No, this needs improvement. But you yeah, I can pass it back to the people Thank you. Yeah. Better. You're also Thank running you. you're also running most of your containers with systemd end spawn, right? Uh do, 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 do. We are moving in that direction, yes. <laughs> so, like, a lot of this stuff existed before nSpawn, and so nSpawn is the, like, oh, thank God we don't have to do this ourselves anymore. But right now, it's I think it's 50-50. Sorry, I didn't want to spoil it. Yeah. Um, yes, but, you know, there is also a documentation and extension process for uh, the specific runtime. Yeah, I, like, I think that if you... I mean, you could even go so far as to add it to system D, and like that covers a lot of use cases, right? Doesn't obviously doesn't cover other container people, but they're on their own. So we consider it system D, and, and the issue we run into is the the unifier has to be set before the first NFS mount runs, and we see some variation in that guarantee. Anyway, that's, that's a different story and I'm out of time. So yeah. I thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, well, I don't know where Omar went off to, so I'll say something. Oh, there you are. Do you want to say something? No, okay. Uh, we, are, we don't have anything for FS or IO for this next half hour. Um, so people on the call, you can drop off if you feel like. At five o'clock, we will be back in this room for lightning talks. If you have a lightning talk, we don't have a way to like indicate that, so just find one of the PC members. Um, I'm going to have something that I talk about like maintainership and responsibilities and that sort of thing, uh, but that's gonna be a little bit long. So if anybody has anything they wanna talk about, let me know, and you guys can go first. Or Otherwise, let me know if it's- Oh yeah, like any, any PC person can handle it.
And uh, for the people on Zoom, it's a new Zoom link for the lightning talks. Yeah, and so that's in a half an hour. <laughs>